The movie begins with a 17-year-old Maria Brennan preparing for school. She lives with her parents, Dan and Amy, in a luxurious home, but life appears to be difficult for her. Because of her timid nature, Maria is an outcast at school, and she is often bullied by a guy named Mark. On the contrary, her only friend Lily is a confident figure skater and has a boyfriend named Sean. At times, Maria finds herself jealous of her friend. Maria's parents also worry about her aloofness, and they have tried to convince her to go to the upcoming school prom many times, but without success. In contrast to most stereotypical overprotective dads, Maria's father is only concerned about her looks and social status. He actually thinks that she is screwed up because of her disinterest in boys or any social activities. Maria is aware about her parents' worries, and one day, she sneaks into their room and tries to put on her mother's makeup. However, she abruptly stops when she notices something protruding from the edge of the mirror. To her surprise, it's a strange sonogram image of twins. In the middle of the night, Maria is in the bathroom when suddenly, her reflection in the mirror stares back at her, causing her to lose her balance and fall. She quickly gets up and clears the steam from the mirror, gradually revealing her reflection. To Maria's utter shock, the reflection continues to move, prompting her to run away in horror. The following day, Maria tries to tell her parents about the incident, but as expected, they brush her concerns aside. Later at school, Maria is once again bullied by Mark as he trips her and makes her fall to the ground. Everyone only laughs at her, but surprisingly, Sean appears out of nowhere and helps her up. He even shoves Mark and warns him to stay away from her. This act of kindness excites Maria, as no one has ever stood up for her before. After school, she takes a relaxing bath, remembering her earlier encounter with Sean, but she is soon troubled by the sound of a baby's cries. The images of Maria's own birth flash in her mind and disturb her peace. Afterwards, she finds it difficult to fall asleep. Suddenly, a voice calls out her name, prompting her to investigate. Lo and behold, it is revealed to be her own reflection in the mirror. Maria is initially scared, but she soon works up the courage to speak to her. The reflection calls herself Aram and claims that she is Maria's complete opposite, confident, charismatic, and dominant. The two then chat for a while and discuss their likes and dislikes. As they become friends, Aram offers to assist Maria in overcoming her problems and becoming more confident. The next day, Maria surprises her parents by announcing that she wants to go to the prom. Moreover, later at school, she expresses interest in learning how to skate for winter prom. That evening, Maria goes to her father's clinic to spend some time with him. As she watches him get close to a female client, she suspects that he is having an affair. On the way back home, Dan asks her to visit him at the clinic tomorrow for an early birthday present. When Maria shares this with her reflection that night, she is told that her father is a bad person who only cares about himself. Maria obviously doesn't buy this, so she defends her dad, saying that he he is planning to gift her a car. However, the next day, Dan surprises Maria with a cosmetic procedure instead. He tells her that he wants to fix her unusually large ears and nose. This emotionally wrecks the teenager, and she finally realizes that Dan hates her imperfections. In the next scene, Aram comforts Maria and tells her that they can teach their dad a lesson. She also points out that Amy is weak for putting up with Dan's toxicity. As the conversation drags on, Maria feels better, and the two girls share a laugh. This attracts Amy's attention, and she asks Maria who she was talking to. When the latter isn't able to give her a satisfactory answer, Amy begins to wonder if she's taking narcotics. Later, Amy shares her concerns with Dan, but he completely ignores the matter. Instead, he gives her some sleeping pills, applies a beauty cream to her face, and then puts her to bed. Before dozing off, Amy mentions that her nightmares have returned, but he assures her that they will go away like they always do. The following day, Maria and Lily go to practice ice skating. Since our protagonist girl has never stepped foot on ice before, she easily slips and falls to the ground. However, instead of helping her up, Lily rudely tells her to stay away from Sean. Dejected that her only friend has started disliking her, Maria returns home and confides in Aram. The latter comforts her for a while and then explains how Lily is a bad influence. The only thing she cares about is her popularity. Aram asserts she is Maria's sole friend and the only one who can alleviate her pain. To achieve this, she proposes that Maria switch places with her, surrendering control of her life. The confused teenager almost gives in and prepares to touch her reflection. But right then, Amy arrives and tells her that she's getting late for prom. Startled, Maria quickly puts on the prom dress and rushes to school. Unfortunately, this turns out to be a bad decision as she is overwhelmed by the bustling crowd, dazzling lights, and booming music. Fearing the possibility of falling, Maria finds it difficult to let go. She prepares to leave, but Sean approaches her at the last second and extends his hand, offering 
offering support. Maria happily accepts, and so the two make their way to the center of the rink and start dancing in each other's arms. Lily, who is nearby, watches all of this go down and becomes envious. So, she deliberately startles Maria, making her lose balance and fall to the ground. Sean tries to assist her, but Lily intervenes, preventing him from doing so. To make matters worse, the bully Mark arrives at the scene and starts pulling Maria across the rink. All the students simply watch her scream and plead for help, completely disregarding how she is feeling. When Mark finally stops, Maria runs away from the premises, embarrassed. This proves to be the final straw for her, so she ultimately decides to let Aram take control over her life. They touch hands and lifts, initiating the transformation process, like some sort of sexy fusion dance. Once everything is done, Maria is the one behind the mirror, while Aram is free to go anywhere she wants. Meanwhile, in the adjacent room, Amy is having a nightmare about the day she gave birth to Maria. In the dream, she is screaming in excruciating pain. The next day, Aram goes to school and encounters Mark in the hallway. She confidently walks up to him, grabs his crotch, and licks his ear before walking away, leaving him speechless. All he wanted was a little ASMR. Soon, Lily approaches her and tries to fake concern, but Aram sees right through her. Nevertheless, she continues to be friendly with Lily and asks her to teach her how to skate again at the rank. Later, Aram goes to her father's clinic. There, she distracts the receptionist and steals the number of Dan's mistress. She then arranges for the mistress and Amy to come to the clinic at the same time. Aram's plan works, and Amy encounters the mistress in the elevator. She is heartbroken when she realizes that her husband is cheating on her. The scene then cuts to the ice rink, where several students have come to practice. In the meantime, Aram meets Mark and lures him into the washroom. Once there, she suddenly strikes him in the knee with a hockey stick, causing it to dislocate. Mark collapses on the ground and screams in agony. He pleads for help, but Aram leaves him by himself to suffer. Soon, everyone heads home, but Aram stays back with Lily to practice skating. She surprisingly changes her demeanor and starts skating like a pro, much to her friend's surprise. Then, a sense of determination takes over Aram, and she begins chasing Lily with a deadly look in her eyes. Scared, Lily tries to get away from her, but ends up stumbling and hitting her head on the hard cement. She profusely bleeds, but Aram only watches her slowly succumb to her injuries. After a while, Aram calls the authorities and informs them about Lily's accident, while pretending to be scared and worried for her friend. In the phone's reflection, the real Maria is seen, crying. Later, Aram returns home, and a detective arrives to interrogate her, but Amy convinces him to return at another time. In the bathroom, Maria confronts her about the murder, but Aram menacingly says that Lily deserved it. Hearing this, Maria becomes scared and expresses her desire to exchange positions again, but Aram refuses, saying that she is not done yet. It literally just hit me that Aram is Maria backwards. The scene then cuts to Lily's funeral. There, the detective offers his condolences to Sean and makes eye contact with Aram. This makes the latter uncomfortable, and she proceeds to leave. However, Sean stops and embraces her. Later that night, Aram sneaks out of her house to visit Sean. He takes her to his room and offers her a joint. As they discuss their lives, Aram positions herself in front of Sean and looks into his eyes. She then reveals that she has been fantasizing about him and begins touching him where the sun doesn't shine. Sean tries to stop her at first, but soon he eventually gives in, and the two make love. The following day, Aram goes on a dinner date with her father. Dan is worried about her well-being after Lily's passing, but Aram is entirely unaffected by the incident. It's also revealed that after his affair had been exposed, Dan has been avoiding going home. Aram questions him about his plans to reconcile with Amy, and he assures her that he will soon make things go back to normal. Aram then starts acting strange, eating loudly and unladylike. This gets into Dan's head, and so he chastises her to sit properly. Aram reluctantly obliges, but her resentment towards Dan only continues to grow. Over the course of the next few days, Aram continues to avoid school, convincing Sean to bunk classes with her. One day, they check into a motel to make love. However, Sean gets a call from his mommy, informing him that the police want to interrogate them. Worried, he plans to leave, but Aram refuses to go. She then tries to tempt Sean with kisses, but this only makes him suspicious, and he asks why she's avoiding the police. Realizing that she has been exposed, Aram grabs a bottle and hits him on the head with it. Unfortunately, he passes away within a few minutes. After this, Aram goes to the bathroom and sees a hysterical Maria crying her eyes out. The two then get close and comfort each other. Meanwhile, back at home, Amy experiences another nightmare. In her dream, we see that Maria had a deformed twin sister, and Dan believed it was futile to let the baby live. So, he made the decision to euthanize her. It turns out Aram is actually Maria's deceased twin sister. Ah, it all uh, makes sense now. Back in reality, Aram shows up at Dan's clinic and rings the doorbell. She stands weakly at the door, unable to support herself. Dan carries her to the operating table and fetches a glass of water for her. But, to his surprise, she begins taking off her clothes. Oh, 
Enraged, he demands that she put her clothes back on, but Aram begins to remove the rest of her garments. She then questions her father if he finds her beautiful. Dan reluctantly says that she is beautiful, but then she inquires if he would still love her even if she had deformities. Once again, Dan replies in the affirmative, saying that he would love her unconditionally, regardless of any imperfections. However, Aram doesn't believe him and swiftly slashes his throat with a sharp object. After he bleeds to death, an angry Aram questions why he couldn't love her in the past. Afterwards, she calls out for Maria but doesn't get a response. So, she returns home and lies next to a dazed Amy. The final scene concludes with shimmering reflections and a depiction of Amy embracing both her daughters in her arms. This indicates that Aram and Maria have turned into a single person. Yeah? What'd you do? Yeah. Okay. I just double checked with my reflection. We both think that that movie was ridiculous. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.